In the world of manufacturing, man has changed the shape of the earth. From a spoon to a train, humanity has sculpted the objects that we rely on and use every single day. But what if I were to tell you that we can now print a lot of these items? Say like an engine, here's why. Hi, my name's Calm. I'm studying mechanical engineering at City Liverpool College and today I'm going to show you how you can 3D print an engine. This is the CAD suite where we draw and work on our 3D models. Today I'm going to show you a steam engine I've been working on and take you through the process from start to finish. First we start by getting our ideas down onto paper. Now we get our hand drawings onto the computer in a drawing system such as Fusion 360. This is Fusion 360. It's a program used for drawing, rendering and animating any 3D drawings. Now we're going to start off by attempting to draw a flywheel. So we're going to start off doing a center diameter circle. Next, we're going to try and array. Um, using the press pull tool, we can then pull it up or down. And this will be where our piston will join to. And using the extrude tool again, we'll press pull. We'll just use regular steel for this and drag it onto the model. And that's how we inputted the physical materials. And now if we look onto there, it has a slight shine to it and shows that it's now a steel material. Now I've got the flywheel. I'm going to show you a piston I've also made. This piston will interface with the flywheel in the main steam engine. If we have a look here, this is the piston head. The piston rings will go here, which helps give it a snugger fit um, in the cylinder. We now export this as an STL, which can then be loaded into the 3D printer's proprietary software. Here we can see it's the same piston as we designed on Fusion. So this board's been preheating for about 15 minutes to get up to the correct printing temperature. We want it to be around 50 degrees Celsius at the very minimum to help the plastic stick to the board. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the print and select the button that just says print. Close the door over, select print. Now we're going to press print and we're going to see the piston start printing. The 3D printer is now starting to print the material. It's heated it up to the correct temperature. As you can see, it's moving up and down the nozzle just constantly squirts out parts of material so this will just keep working now for about another 30 minutes now the 3d print's done and um, we're going to be taking it out and we're going to have to remove the supports off it so we just open this up pull the board out inspect the print looks like it's printed fine now we just need to get the supports off now this is what the supports look like when we took out the 3D printer and after removing it, as you can see, it's the normal 3D print. So we continue removing the rest. As we can see, we have the piston head and the bottom bit is now flat. All that requires is a bit of sanding and then that'll be a finished 3D print. Once we've 3D printed, we can then bring it to a workshop and we can manufacture our actual product. Using 3D printing, we can take it from the processing stage right up to the fabrication stage. Thanks to 3D printing, we can now prototype anything that we can imagine. And that means that there's endless possibilities in industry in the future. And that's why you can 3D print an engine. Thanks for watching. So that's it. You can get information like this and a whole lot more by visiting the City of Liverpool College. See the links below to discover endless possibilities. Bye.